Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I wanna talk about the five things you should do, my top five recommendation of the things you should do before you publish a Power BI report to your production environment. Stay tuned. Do, 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 do. finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the videos from both Adam and myself. All right, Patrick, I already do a lot of stuff before I put a report in production. You're telling me you want me to do more? You may already be doing some of the steps that I'm about to outline, but you maybe you're not. Um, and so I just wanna give you the top five things that I recommend you do before you put a report in production. Okay, so let's get into this. Number one, the very first thing you should do is split the data model and the report into two PBIX files. So you have this nice lean report and a separate environment for developing your data model. So you can create reports, modify reports, and publish the report without affecting the data set. And you can also do some local development of your data model. You can publish the data model into a development environment and people can kick the tires on it. So you have these two separate things and now they can be managed, developed, designed, and maintained completely separately. And you may be thinking to yourself, Patrick, how do I separate them? Ah, so you guys know what I like to do instead of all this talking, let me give you a, a couple of pointers and show you how to do this. Let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. Let's say you have this data model and you're thinking, how do I do this? Well, if you go out to, right, Haven's Consultant, out to their YouTube channel, Reed has a video where he explains how to split the report and the data model, how you divide that one single PBIX file into two, one for the data set and one to a nice lean report. And no code is required. And basically what Reed does, he goes into the query editor, deletes all of the queries. Now, before you do this, make sure you have a copy of this report with, a sep with only the data model, all right? Only the data model and publish that up to the service. So you can see if we go here, that's what I've done right here. I've just published the data model and then go back to your Power BI report. Once you've deleted everything, yep, you'll have all these little X's like Reed talks about in this video and then just get connect Power BI data set. As long as the scheme is the same, everything will work and boom, you'll have a disconnected environment with one lean report and one nice data model and you can do separate development. Now I know what you guys are thinking, especially people that have gone down this path. Patrick, that's a lot of work because anytime I change the data model, I got to publish it, man, open a report, refresh the report. Well, I got something for you. I got something for you. Steve Campbell over at Power BI Tips created this nice little external tool where it can hot swap between a local data model and live connection. So you can swap that report from the live connection to the local data model, do all the uh, modeling locally, and then change it back and publish it up. So you don't have to go through that iterative process, publish, refresh, publish, if refresh. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Reed, for those great contributions to our community. They're gonna help a lot, get rid of all these crazy data silos. Number two. Guess what you gotta do with number two? You gotta go talk to some people. I know, as IT, we kind of live in our little bubbles. We talk to our IT people, we create our stuff, and we usually, the only time we talk to end users, people that are using the stuff we create, is after we publish it out, they start complaining. In this case, you wanna be a little more proactive. So after you initially design the report and the data model, go talk to the people that's using the report. Go talk to the people that's using the data model, and they may tell you, your baby is ugly. It's all right. It's all right. The baby's ugly. It's okay. Right? Take that advice. Right? Write it down. Open up one note. Take some notes. They may say, hey, I need a new measure. I need some columns. I don't need these columns. What is it? Why is it filtering this way? I really don't need that bi-directional relationship. That's bananas. What's the point of that? You know, take all that feedback, hold on to it, and we're gonna talk about step number three. Take all that information that they gave you and go fix your reports, right? Go fix your data models, change the relationships, remove columns, add columns. Basically, you're optimizing that schema. You're optimizing that data model. I'm not talking about optimizing DAX or performance, anything like that. This optimization will help performance, but we're not into DAX yet. We're just talking about changing the data model, adding things, removing things. Maybe you need to remove some rows, right? But guess what? After you finish step number three, you may need to go back to step number two to talk to those report consumers and data analysts. Again, let them give you the feedback. Don't stop that iterative process until they say, this baby's kind of cute. 
I like this baby. This baby's cute. Once you get to that point and they're telling you your baby is cute, it's time to go to step number four. And you guys are probably thinking, Patrick, what about performance? Well, now we're talking about performance because we want things to go. Woof. We want it to be as fast as possible. When they open up a report, we don't want them to wait. We don't want them to go to get some coffee or to the water cooler and stand and wait for five minutes until someone, until that, because they know it's gonna take a long time for that report refreshes. They don't want to wait that long. They just want to click it within milliseconds or seconds at least, the report renders, okay? So what you want to do, wait, 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 instead of all this talking, let me show you. Let's head over where? To my laptop. Okay, so what you want to do with your report go to view and you know where i'm going performance analyzer start recording but before you click refresh go over to dac studio go to external tools fire up dac studio and clear the cache clear the cache go ahead and refresh your visuals do this because we're just looking at dax right now sort this descending and sort it by my dax query Go find the longest running query, copy that query, head back over to DAC Studio, turn on server timings, paste that in there, and select clear cache and run. Run this, go take a peek at those server timings once it renders and start optimizing the DAX. Work all the way through it until everything is, you know, maybe less than two seconds or as fast as you can get it, right? It depends on what your SLA is with the report consumers, but try to get it within those acceptable ranges. Once you do that, right, you're getting closer to what? That cute little baby. What's well, step number five, Patrick? Step number five is really interesting. And most people don't do this, in fact, I didn't do this until maybe about a year ago, maybe a little longer than that, but not until recently. We always talk about making sure a report is accessible or making sure we follow visualization best practices. Don't use pie charts. Make sure the best thing is in the upper left corner. I'm not using pie chart anyway, right? Don't do this. Don't not too many colors. Make sure you have the right color template. All these different things. Use the right visual for the right, you know, story you're trying to tell. Those are all great but you also need to optimize the visuals for performance, okay? And when you're using Power BI, Power BI will give you a good indication if you're not doing that. You want me to show you how? Let's do it. Let's head over to my laptop. So the best way to do this, there's two, two caches in your report. There's the data cache and the visual cache. We can clear the data cache by using DAC Studio or SSMS. The visual cache, we can't clear. The only way we can clear it is by closing the report and opening it. And so Marco Russo has a really good video about, you know, a slow report um, where he focuses on DAX. But in this video, I'm going to focus not only on DAX like Marco did, but I want to talk about another option from a visual perspective. So you create this blank page, save the report, close it and reopen it with that blank page. Open, go to view. Click on Performance Analyzer, choose Start Recording, then flip over to a page, right? Once you flip over to a page, you'll see things start spinning and you may be astounded and go, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't expand anything yet, sort it descending, right? And then let's sort this by total time. There we go. And so we see this is the longest one. If we expand this out, well, the DAX query fast, the visual display is fast. Hmm. There's this other, what is this other? Power BI has to do some things to prepare the visuals and only a certain number of visuals will render at the same time. The more visuals you have on the page, the longer that other will be. The best way to do it is to optimize the elements on the visuals elements on that page. My buddy, Chris Hamill has a great blog post actually talking about that for improved performance, right? Like taking a, you, instead of having multiple cards, use a matrix and put those elements in the matrix. If there's things on the report, like visuals, like you saw, I had like these little icons on it. If you don't need those icons, remove them. You don't need them, get rid of them. You know what I mean, all right? So clean up your reports, optimize them for performance. And then guess what? You may have to go all the way back to step two. You go through step two, walk through the steps again, and then maybe you get to a point where your report consumers and the data analysts go, this is a beautiful baby. I can use this. I can use this. Once they say that, it's time to publish that report where? 
to production. All right, what do you guys think? Are you using these steps in the process to get reports to, re to production? Are you using other steps? I'm sure you're using tons of other steps to get your reports into production. I love to know. You guys know how I like to do. Let's continue the conversation. Where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.